One of the things I do when I'm going to take on a project like this is I get a one inch binder and I download or print out all the information so that I have a checklist and I can have something here on hard copy I can take with me at any time, review it. Um, rather than doing it on the computer, I can also, um, as I'm installing parts, what I do is, is I will check mark off that I've completed it. So if I have to stop or get called away, I know where I'm going to start again. Now if you start to see several dots on it or several lines, that means I've installed it once, I've checked it again, I've checked it again, and I've checked it again. So I know I've had problems with it. And the big thing you've got to understand is, is that this is great we're doing this entire system here on a car, but one day you're going to sell the car or somebody's going to have a problem and you're not going to be uh, available to figure out what that problem might be. Well, you've got this whole book here that explains exactly what you've done and, and like I say, I have notes on the, on the sheets where I've had issues, something that's changed. Even when I'm into the uh, programming, I compare it and, and see exactly what's happened with, with the, uh, um, the install. If I have an issue or I verified something, I, I, I write everything down. Again, um, I'm, I've got electrical background, I'm an electrician, and this is how we used to work if we were doing a job on shifts with continuity. You could pass the information from one tradesman to another, and he didn't have to wait, uh, waste hours trying to get up to speed and figure out what's going on or what you have or haven't done. So just a thought, that's the way I do it, but at least when the car is completed, I have a documented uh, uh, information here of everything that's been done, and I will put a, burn a CD with a file in it, and that way whoever's got the car, uh, they're, they're all set to go. Okay, if you look over here, I have a Noid light on the injector. So I've got the injectors firing. I'll turn it. So it shows that the, the primary injectors are good. Okay, finally I have both leading and trailing spark. I'm just going to spin it. Hopefully you can see that. We have spark. So we're good. Verified. My next test will be to uh, put the Noid light in on the secondary injectors. Uh, these should come on at about 3500 RPM according to the uh, Megasquirt manual. What I've done is I've set the set point to 290 RPM and I'm just going to spin the crank angle sensor just to make sure that they do fire. And it does. So my next test will be to put it back to 3500 RPM and make sure that it doesn't fire. I don't want to flood the engine with fuel uh, on the first start. Well, what I've done now is I've uh, added fuel into uh, the tank and I've turned the fuel pump on only by turning on the engine controller for a couple of seconds and it has since uh, primed the, uh, the fuel rail. I added this in on it so I know that I have fuel pressure and I've gone over the engine looking for any fuel leaks that could be happening uh, that I've missed and currently I don't see any. So that's a positive sign as well. So. Almost there, for ready for a start. Okay, we have the engine running on the stand. If you can take a look at where I've got the crank uh, angle sensor positioned, obviously when I assembled the engine, I did not mark the pulleys correctly. There were no uh, marks on it, so I've got to make a change with that. But the engine is running. Um, we've got about a thousand RPM here. It's got a little bit of a dance to it, but I don't know if that's whether it's, it's a consi uh, consistent me uh, miss in it or if it's just because I've got it on an engine stand and it's not really anchored down to anything solid. So it might be a little bit of uh, oscillation that's happening here. The other thing I notice which is out is that the RPM gauge on the FC is showing at about 500 and the RPM here on Megasquirt Mega is showing at a, about a thousand so I have a 50% a discrepancy and not sure why.
about a just a little over a thousand RPM uh, idle here. Um, of course, we don't have an exhaust system on it. I just got the flex hose going out, and I kind of think the vibration just happens to be it's on a rickety stand and a little bit of shake, and it's just oscillating. Um, looking at it now, I think what we're probably going to do is uh, disassemble all of this. All that down there, that mess, the wires, that's all going to go for a strap. And the stand's going to get scrapped. And once we get the engine in the car, it's going to be a, a lift in from the bottom. 